Hi, and welcome to Safe in the Real World. I'm Ahmed Said, and today we are going to be talking about how do we measure value in a scaled agile environment. Now, in our last video, we talked about the five key elements that we need to have in place to measure our success in such an environment. But now we're going to be doing a deep dive into how do we determine what's valuable in our project, in our program, or in our organization. Now, one of the key challenges that we have with determining how valuable something is, is, is that it is quite obviously context specific. So it depends upon our project goals, our business vision, and it's unique to each and every single environment. Now, what's valuable in one organization may not be valuable in another. So for us to be able to understand what that is, we need to be really clear in terms of what our goals are and clarity in terms of how, what it is we wish to achieve. Now clarity is power and so frequently we have goals at an organization, division or even at a personal level, they're not clearly defined. If we don't know where we're going then the chances of us actually getting there is, is little slim to none. Now at an organizational level you need to know what, where your goals are but also what's valuable to you as well. Now how do you know whether you've achieved that? You know because if you were to quiz a number of people at random in your organization and you were to ask them what was the overall goals of your organization, program or project, whatever's, whatever's relevant, they should be able to tell you what that is and also why it's so important. So having clear goals is really important. And the other thing that we need to look at is, is that what is valuable in our specific environment? That could be any number of things and I've written a few uh, items over here. It could be your brand, your reputation, it could be your customer uh, acquisition or retention, it could be increasing our profits through either reducing costs or, or for example um, increasing our revenue. Uh, making sure that our customers are, are excited and delighted in terms of the kind of offerings that we're providing, the products and the services that we're providing. Could be increased market share, time to market or reducing defects, etc, etc. Now the challenge we have is, is it's really going to be one of these things. It's probably going to be multifaceted. So that's one of the challenges that we have and we're going to look at how we resolve that in a few minutes. The second challenge we have is that it's subjective. Okay, it's dependent, on, could be influenced by personal tastes, our feelings. One person may have one opinion, another person may have another opinion. Okay, so how do we take that from something that's quite subjective to something that's more measurable? And, and finally, it's quite fluid, so it can change over time. It's not necessarily static. What's valuable to an organization, a program, or initiative can change over time. So we need to have a look and see how we can revisit that. So let's have a quick look and see what we can do to solve these three key problems that we have when we're determining value. So, the first one is relatively straightforward, context specific. How do we find out what is really important and valuable in our organization? Well, you can hold a workshop, you can have a group of key stakeholders from around the organization or around the project or the program, depending on the scope and context. And you can ask them, you can ask them what is most valuable to us in terms of our organization, in terms of our goals, objectives that we wish to achieve. Now, once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to try and get the group to come to a consensus on the top three to maximum about five, what I call value levers. Okay, so what are the three to five most important value elements that are going to move the needle for that program or for that project or for that organization? So that's the first thing that you do. Now, the next thing you have is you have a problem of a subjectivity, right? How do we take something that's subjective right? Um, and try and make it more quantifiable. So one thing that I find quite useful is to look at other genres. And if we look at other areas such as the health industry, we can see something, we can get some ideas and some clues from that. So the health industry has done a very good job of trying to take something as subjective as pain and try to make it more quantifiable and more measurable. It's called the Wong-Baker pain scale. And if you look on your screen, what you're going to see is you can see a series of simple images that represent 
the uh, what each um, pain level uh, means and it's quite simple and straightforward it's something that's frequently used with children as well so so that's one of the key things so what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves can we come up with some simple approach something similar to the universal pain assessment that works for your organization you need to it needs to be self-explanatory so for example when you give somebody a card or a5 sheet of paper which is representing your scale it shouldn't need further explanation and finally um, is the time-based thing and this is relatively easy to do well the question we have is we need to ask ourselves is how frequently do we need to revisit our scale and our levers that we have determined now if we do it too frequently then we don't have a baseline to compare against if we do it too infrequently then what's valuable over time may change as well so there you have it you have three of the challenges and three three tips to help solve that how do we take the value from a, a, a context specific how do we deal with that how do we manage the fact that it may be subjective and how do we manage that uh, issue of time sensitivity i hope you find that useful in the next video i'm going to be walking through an example of of this and how we can determine value for something uh, for an, an example project i look forward to speaking to you in the next video please do visit us on www.sprintzero.com see you next week thank you very much bye